Part One. You will hear a new student on a short summer course getting information from the college receptionist. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation, and answer questions one to five. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> okay, here's the information you need. On the first page, there's some info about the college, the facilities, the courses on offer, etc. Uh -huh. Then, on these blue pages here, there's an outline of the social activities. You see there? Okay. Yes. Now, this part of the booklet here, the yellow pages, that's the main program starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. 9 a.m. Okay. So all the new students will be gathering in Herville Hall at nine o'clock.、Uh, sorry, where? Herville Hall. I'll spell it for you. It's H E R V I double L, and then H A double L for hall, of course. It's the big white building by the entrance. Okay, I've seen it. Right. Anyway, you'll be in there for an hour. First, the director of studies will explain the various courses we offer and the requirements for them. Then, for the second half hour, the social organizer will tell you more about the social program and Saturday excursions. Is that all clear? Um. Yes, I think so. Then, where do I go after that? Ah, yes. Okay. After the talks in the hall, there's a break. And then at quarter to eleven, go to classroom four to have a placement test. Quarter to eleven. This placement test is to find my level in English. Exactly. Then after the test, all the new students are invited to a special welcome lunch. In the cafeteria? No, no, not for the welcome lunch. It's in a restaurant near the school, an Indian restaurant. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever tried Indian food. Do you like spicy food?、Uh, yes, I do. Then you'll love Indian. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen, and answer questions six to ten. So, where's the Indian restaurant? Don't worry, it's really easy to find. Have you got that map I gave you?、Uh, this one. Yes, that's it. See here, the main entrance to the school. Yes.、Mm -hmm. Well, don't go out of there.、Oh. There's a smaller entrance here, round the back. Oh yes, I see. Okay, so you go out of there, past the phone box, and then turn right into this road here, the one that goes along the side of the park.、Mm -hmm. You'll see a supermarket on the left, and then it's just after that on the right.、Uh -huh. It's quite a big place; you can't miss it. Okay. And one more thing: is there a post office near here? Post office. Oh yes, of course. Just the other side of the park. Go through the middle of the park, and it's there by the park entrance. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Oh, there's a good cafe near here too. Very popular with the students. Just there. You go out of the main entrance into Varley Road, then turn left at the bank, and it's at the end of the street. They do amazing coffee. That's great. Thanks very much. No problem. Enjoy your course. Thanks again. Bye. That is the end of part one. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a member of the local council describing plans to redevelop part of the seafront of a coastal town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Good evening, everybody. I wasn't expecting to see so many people. Clearly, this is an issue of great local interest. Thank you all for coming. Well, as you all know, I've come to talk about the Council's plans for redeveloping the western part of the seafront. Firstly, of course, the Queen's Parade shopping centre is to be demolished. It was built on the cheap and in a hurry in 1953 and recently came third in a national newspaper's ugliest buildings in the country list, so I don't think anybody's going to miss it. The question was, what do we replace it with? Well, after consultations with the local community, we decided, as I'm sure most of you are aware, to replace it with a complex of small shops and workshops, plus a three-screen cinema. We particularly didn't want another bland glass and steel shopping centre full of the same old chain stores as every other town centre. No, this is our chance to do something just a little bit different. I'll start at the top. On the third floor will be a cafe and a restaurant. Part of this will be open air, so people can enjoy a meal or a cup of coffee in the fresh air, weather permitting, of course. Below this will be the cinema. And below that, on the first floor, will be some much needed council offices. We're getting very cramped in the town hall, I can assure you. On the ground floor will be 20 small shop units, ranging in size from 20 to 50 square metres. Also on the ground floor will be five workshop spaces, which we hope will attract small manufacturing businesses back to the town centre, providing some additional local employment. Underneath the centre will be an underground car park, not a great big car park like in the present centre. Our aim is that most visitors to the centre will come on foot or by bus. In fact, the car park will be restricted to people working in the centre and disabled visitors. Then, and perhaps this is the most exciting part of the project, the beach in front of the new complex is going to be completely transformed. We're going to extend the beach. Yes, extend it. 10,000 tonnes of sand is going to be brought in to make it into a proper beach instead of the dirty little strip of sand it is now. As well as being for the enjoyment of local people, we're hoping that a decent beach will attract more visitors to the town and that has to be good for local businesses. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now I must emphasize that these plans have not yet been finalized. That's what this meeting is about. Of course, it's vital with a project like this that we have the support of local people. After all, we work for you and it's your money that's paying for it. So, first of all, the plans for the new centre are going to go on display in the town hall. They'll be there from Monday the 5th of March until Friday the 6th of April. Uh, plenty of time for anybody who's interested to get over there and have a look at them, I think. There'll be a suggestions box in the same room as the plans. Anybody who has anything to say is welcome to fill in a suggestions form. These forms will be looked at and taken seriously. You can be sure of that. Then on Tuesday, April the 10th, there'll be another public meeting much like this one and in this same place. It'll start at seven o'clock and there'll be a chance for local residents to address the council. We'll also report back to you on the results gathered in the suggestions box. Anyway, I'd now like to hand you over to my colleague, my fellow councillor. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a lecture about the Miner's Hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good evening and welcome to the Minor Hotel. We are pleased to have you as our guest. I will give you a brief information session to tell you everything you need to know to make this a pleasant stay. The Minor Hotel was built in the 1850s, during the Gold Rush period, also nicknaming our state the Golden State. People from all over the country and even from other countries came to seek their fortune here in these hills, creating cities overnight. In this city, many gold rush hotels soon opened up. This particular hotel was built in 1851, but was destroyed during an earthquake. It was rebuilt in 1995 to recreate the feel of the gold rush, complete with articles and actual photographs from during the 1850s. Our hotel is divided into two buildings, one called the Gold Tower, and the other is named the Fortune Tower. You will be staying in the Fortune Tower on the 25th floor, complete with great views of the city. Your room is the best room in the hotel, complete with private living room and hot tub. Here is your room card. On the card it will say FT, meaning Fortune Tower. On the bottom of the card it will say 2515. The 25 stands for the 25th floor, and the 15 stands for the 15th room on that particular floor. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. 
There are emergency exits in both towers of the hotel. They are located on the south side, opposite the elevators. Please use these in case of a fire or other emergency. We have some special events happening this week. Our Miner's Diner is offering a special Miner's Buffet dinner this Friday and Saturday for only $20 per person. This special includes all food, not including drinks and alcohol, and shows for the night. The buffet will be available from 5 to midnight. Because of the historical significance of our hotel, there are some special rules. The first rule is that there is no smoking allowed anywhere in the building, not even in your own room. This is not only to ensure the safety and health of our guests, but also the furniture and pictures can be easily damaged by smoke and other harsh treatment. Please remember that there are items of furniture over a hundred years old here, so respect the rules by not smoking. Secondly, please do not take pictures using a flash of any of the drawings and paintings in the rooms or hallways as they are old and fragile. We are doing our best to preserve a national treasure, so please help us in doing so. Lastly, you will only have one set of towels and bed sheets per three days. This is to conserve the water supply, as there are frequent droughts this high up in the hills. If there are any further questions, the staff of the hotel will be available to answer your questions. In the event that no one is able to answer your questions, I will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day in the concierge. I hope you enjoy your stay here with us. Thank you very much. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. Hear a talk given by Don Parker, an expert on computer security, about the computer criminals. As you listen to the talk, fill in the gaps numbered 31 to 40. First, you will have some time to look at the notes below. Now listen to the talk. Hi there. As an expert on computer security, my job is to oversee and analyse the phenomenon in computer users. Computer has been commonplace in our daily life, make our life and work efficiently and lively. However, with the development of the computer technology, computer crime has come to arise more people's attention. Now, in respect of this topic, I will present some of my view and studies. What kinds of people are perpetrating most of the information technology crime? According to my research, over 80% may be employees. The rest are outside users, hackers and crackers and professional criminals. It is amazing that employees amount for this large portion. Let us see them in detail. Employees. Employees are those with the skills, the knowledge and the access to do bad things. Dishonest or disgruntled employees pose a far greater problem than most people have realised. To most supervisors and some experts, they worry that dishonest employees or outsiders can more easily intercept communications or steal company trade secrets. Workers may use information technology for personal profit or steal hardware or information to sell. They may also use it to seek revenge for real or imagined wrongs such as being passed over for promotion. Sometimes they may use the technology simply to demonstrate to themselves that they have the power over people. This may have been the case with a, a Georgia printing company employee convicted of sabotaging the firm's computer system. As files mysteriously disappeared and the system randomly crashed, other workers became so frustrated and enraged that they quit. 
outside users. Suppliers and clients may also gain access to companies' information technology and use it to commit crime. With both, this becomes more a possibility as electronic connections, such as electronic data interchange systems, become commonplace. Hackers and crackers. What are hackers? Hackers are people who gain unauthorized access to computer or telecommunication systems for the challenge or even the principle of it. Crackers also gain unauthorized access to information technology, but do so for malicious purposes. Crackers attempt to break into computers and deliberately obtain information for financial gain, to shut down hardware, pirate software, or destroy data. The tolerance for hackers as the benign explorer has decreased. Most communication systems administrators view any kind of unauthorized access as a threat and they pursue the offenders vigorously. And educators also try to point out to students that university cannot provide an education for everybody if hacking continues. Professional criminals. Members of organized crime rings don't just steal information technology, they use it in a legal way as a business tool, but for illegal purposes. For instance, databases can be used to keep track of illegal gambling debts and stolen goods. Drug dealers have used pages as link to customers. Microcomputers, scanners, and printers can be used to forge checks, immigration papers, passports, and driver's licenses. Telecommunications can be used to transfer funds illegally. As information technology crime has become more sophisticated, in 1988, after the last widespread internet break-in, the US Department created the Computer Emergency Response Team, or CERT. Although it has no power to arrest or prosecute, CERT provides round-the-clock international information and security-related support services to users of the internet. Whenever it gets a report of an electronic snooper, whether on the internet or on a corporate email system, CERT stands ready to lend assistance. It counsels the party under attack, helps them thwart the intruder, and evaluates the system afterwards to protect against future break-ins. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Where's Garrett?